fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, I bet your mothers remember when baking an angel food cake was a dreaded task. Well, it's a joy with Betty Crocker angel food cake mix. All the fine ingredients are right in the package, including the whites of 13 eggs and a special General Mills angel food flour. You just add water, beat, and bake. That's all for the highest, lightest angel food you've ever seen. In fact, it bakes up higher than any cake you can bake with the whites of 13 eggs. Mmm, and so delicious. And there's no guesswork to turn out a perfect angel food every time. In fact, Betty Crocker guarantees a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Absolutely perfect. Or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. And Betty Crocker angel food goes so perfectly with any one of your favorite summer ice creams. You'll want to have it often. Someday soon, ask Mom to bake up a perfect Betty Crocker angel food cake. A light summer dessert for the whole family. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll sell The Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden all night to reach Boomerang Canyon soon after daybreak. As they neared the canyon and the partly finished bridge that spanned it, they permitted their tired horses to move at a slow walk. The bridge seems to be coming along well, Tonto. Uh Bridge mean plenty to west. Trains go over bridge, save plenty miles. The successful completion of the bridge means more than that. Mean more? Yes. In Washington, the Committee of Congress found that there's been a lot of graft in government contracts here in the West. A man named Hale was involved. Him, feller, who built Snake River Bridge. And several others. But four times what the cost should have been. Him go to jail? No, but he lost the contract for this job. Another engineer, John Connors, got the contract. Look like him do good job, Kimasabi. Added a great saving to the government. I'm glad to see the bridge so nearly finished. I thought Hale might make trouble for Connors. Delay the work so the bridge couldn't be finished for the time limit. You hear him? Oh, sir. Oh, oh sir. Scout. Oh, Bella. Someone in the bottom of canyon need help. We're coming. One silver. Get him up, Scout. Followed by Toto, the Lone Ranger guided Silver down a steep and narrow trail to the floor of the canyon, then across the rocky ground to the side of a middle-aged man who lay beneath the bridge. Oh, silver. Oh, you just said it. Get the canteen, Toto. Me get him. Can't. Lie still. We'll help you. Mask by Henry. Of all the people who might have ridden by and hurt my house for help, I have to get an outlaw. This mask marks me as an enemy of outlaws. I don't care what you are. You're the friend in need. Here. Here, water. I don't need water. I need something for a busted leg. Ah, yeah. oh, that rat the luck. Me of all people, and now of all times, to get a busted leg. Some boards over there, Toto. Uh, we'll put splints on the leg, then get this man out of here. Uh -huh. I got a log house up above. There's a ladder over yonder. It goes to the top of the canyon. Yes, I see it. Someone's coming down. Here, here, splints. Me tight, tight. Uh, let me see who's here. coming. Uh, just turning my head makes me hurt all over. Take it easy. Oh, uh, that's Rance Kirk. He's my foreman. Your foreman? My name's Connors, John Connors. Oh, and you're in charge of this bridge. I sure am. Why else would I get up before dawn to come and look things over? Hey, you, Kirk! Uh, I shouldn't hear so. Mr. Connors! 
What happened to you? What's it look like? I fell, busted my leg. Lucky it wasn't my head. Some jughead left planks on the bridge without nailing them down. Hey, you're masked. Uh, Mr. Connors made the same observation. Oh, Dad, had it in the end, you trying to kill me? Me, sorry. Must try a splint plenty tight. That mask calls for an explanation. Uh, explanation, my eye, Kirk. A friend in need don't have to explain a darn thing. Oh, very well. Uh, what'll I do, Kirk? How in tarnation can we finish the bridge with me laid up? Ah, now, don't worry about the bridge, Mr. Connors. Uh, I'll see that the work goes on. You, you'll have to watch out for him. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> Hale's hundreds of miles from here. Uh, don't be sure about that, either. But he is. I had word from a friend who saw him in Washington only two weeks ago. Uh, there you are, Connors. Oh. Now we can carry you up the ladder. Connors was taken to his home. Tonto remained with the injured man while the Lone Ranger rode to the nearest town in search of a doctor. Meanwhile, Rance Kirk supervised the men who worked on the bridge. It was mid-afternoon when Kirk sought the side of a tool shed where it was shady. When he saw a man approaching on horseback, he glanced furtively around to make sure none of the others were watching. Oh, oh there, oh, oh. Mr. Hale. You received my message, Kirk? Yes. Steve said a stranger handed it to him last night when he was in town. I recognized Steve in the description you gave me. He didn't know who I was. I was surprised to learn that you come west. Isn't it a little dangerous to come here? Not unless Connors happens to see me. No one else knows me. Connors had an accident huh? this morning. Broke his leg. Good. Oh, and look. look. Steve is working on the donkey engine. Over there. Yeah, what of it? <laughs> He's using a very old cable. Should have been replaced. Now look at him. He's trying to lift too many timbers with it. If that cable snaps and those heavy timbers fall... Watch that. Look the cable. Get over there, Hale. Go ahead, Kirk. I'm satisfied. Kirk! Kirk! Hale, wearing a smug smile of satisfaction, rode away, while Kirk hurried to the house, where Connors lay on a bunk with Tonto sitting in a chair nearby. And that's how it happened, Mr. Connors. The cable was old, and Steve put too much weight on it. Why in thunder wasn't the new cable installed? Uh, that right. Was anyone hurt? Well, Timmons was down below. He he was killed. Huh? Boys are getting him out of the canyon right now. Carelessness. Downright carelessness. See here, Kirk. We can't spend two weeks repairing that damage. We can't lose two days of progress on that bridge. Well, I don't know what we can do about it. Dude! That. We can get more help. Maybe mass friend have ID when him get here. Hey, that won't bring back Timmons' life. And it won't repair the damage to the bridge. Rance Kirk returned to the construction job, and Connors fumed and worried for the next half hour. Then the door opened. It, well, he came back. Plenty of trouble while you're gone. Yes, I know about it. I saw the bridge damaged and went to look it over. Some of the men told me what happened. No excuse for accidents like that. You're sure it was an accident, Connors? Hey, what'd you ask? Connors, I'm not sure your foreman can be trusted. What's that? Kirk! I heard what you said, mister. So I can't be trusted. Well, no, take it easy, Kirk. Listen, Mr. Connors. This masked man's been snooping around asking questions. If you think hey, you're Kirk, gonna... this man's already proved himself a friend. Friend? Nothing. He's trying to stir up trouble. For all we know, he might be working for Hale. I examined that worn cable, Kirk. Should have been replaced. Yeah, I, I can't do everything. Besides, that cable would have held if Steve hadn't put too much load on it. You fired Steve, didn't you? Sure I did. I paid him off and fired him. Same with the fool who left a loose plank on the bridge. Yes, I know. I met them both on my way from town. They were going to town to have a big evening. Tonight, they might feel expensive, willing to talk. If you say so, Mr. Connors, I'll go to town tonight and question them. But this mess, man... Uh, it might be better if someone else asked a question. You mean I can't be trusted? Can you? That's more than I'll take. I'll show you. Oh, you missed. Uh, stop I'll get you. Please stop him. Keep out of it, Tonto. This'll teach you. Oh, Mr. Gannon, that's enough. Oh, oh. Uh, 
You sure nailed him. Now, stop you. Get up, Kirk. If you want some more, just swing again. Uh, I'll, I'll get you, mister. No man knocks me down and gets away with it. I'll get you. You just wait and see. Sorry about that, Connor. Well, mister, you've made yourself an enemy. Kirk will try to square things with you. And uh, I wouldn't blame him. Oh? You, uh, you made some pretty pointed remarks. I did it to stir things up. You see, Connors, when Kirk said Hale was in Washington, he lied. What? Yes. On my way back from town, I met Steve and Skinny coming from this job. And I saw someone else heading from here to town. I saw Hale. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. After Kirk had left the home of John Connors, the injured contractor looked dubiously at his two visitors, the Lone Ranger and Toto. I've got to know the truth about Ranch Kirk. In that case, Toto, you come with me. We're going into town. Uh... On the way to town, the Lone Ranger outlined a plan to Toto. It involved the use of a disguise and called for daring of the highest order. I'll locate Steve and Skinny while you watch for Rance Kirk. Let me know where he is and what he's doing. In the shelter of a dense stand of underbrush beside the trail, the Lone Ranger removed his mask and his familiar clothing and put on shabby clothes that he carried in a saddlebag. He smeared his face and hands with dirt, and when he was finished, he looked like a vagrant laborer who had been long unemployed. Uh, I guess that'll do. Guns, gun belt. Look too good. I'll leave the gun belt with my other gear on Silver's back. I take Silver with you. You go town without gun, Kimisabi? It'll be better that way. Ah, plenty dangerous. Me not like it. I'll go the rest of the way on foot. See you later, Tonto. Ah, plenty dangerous. While Tonto rode to locate and watch Rance Kirk, the Lone Ranger walked into town dressed in old, well-worn clothing. He lounged near the front porch of the cafe... Though he seemed to be dozing, he was actually alert and watching everyone who entered the building. It was early evening when he saw Steve and Skinny go through the batwing doors. A few minutes later, Tonto came by. The Indian didn't look at the Lone Ranger, but as he rode past, he dropped a piece of paper folded small. The Lone Ranger picked up the paper and read the message. Rance Kirk has left the construction camp and is on his way to town. <laughs> That's what I hoped he'd do. The Lone Ranger crumpled the message and put it into his pocket, then sauntered into the cafe. It took but a moment to locate Steve and Skinny, who were sitting at a table in the corner. Steve was slumped down in his chair with his feet stuck far out into the aisle. The Lone Ranger paused and looked down belligerently. Trying to trip me? Pull in your foot before I step down and break your ankle. Who are you talking to? You. Well, you're talking to big. Oh, why don't you try to shut me up? Uh, see here, mister, if you're looking for trouble... Sit down, give, Skinny. Give, give, keep your paws off, my friend. That goes for you, too. Sit down, unless you want to start trouble. Why, you... you can't push us around like this. Think you're big enough to stop me? Yeah. Hold it. Let go of my arm. And let you pull a gun on me? Oh, not a chance. You've already killed one man today. What's that? I mean the man who's dead because you were too lazy to change the cable on your engine. You're asking for trouble. Well, you'll get it. Hey, kids. Yes, don't start anything. 
sheriff will throw you in jail if you start a scrap. Now, show you. I told you to stay out of this. No, no. You not my friend, Dan. Oh, do you feel slighted? Here's one for you. No, I'll fix you. Credit, credit, credit. Stop the fight. I'll teach you tonight. You around? Bring on the lesson. Hey, hey, up. The sheriff rushed forward, followed by three deputies. Now, don't bring it up now. Stop your fight. Here, grab this critter. That man started it, Sheriff. That was a stranger. He started it. Quiet. Shut up now. I'm jailing all three of you for disturbing the peace. Look here. Put handcuffs on them, boys. We'll lock them up. Get away with them. The first part of the Lone Ranger's plan had worked out satisfactorily. He had accurately judged that the sheriff would jail all participants in a cafe brawl. With Stephen Skinny, he was taken to the cell that adjoined the sheriff's office. Fine thing. You ought to blame for this. You started the round of cafe. I admit it. Jail's a good place for you and Skinny. What's that? I went to Boomerang Canyon to see if I could help on the bridge. I learned of two... Well, uh, accidents. What about those accidents? A man known as the Lone Ranger was asking questions. What? The Lone Ranger? Hey, what's he asking questions for? He suspected that you, Skinny, left loose planks on purpose in the hope that Connors would fall. What? Oh, that's And a he lot. suspected that you, Steve, intentionally overloaded a worn cable. Say here, mister... You had better let me go on. Yeah, go on. What else did the Lone Ranger do? He told Connors and Kirk that he intended to talk to you and Skinny and find out whether you two caused those accidents. Well, he needn't think I'll talk to him. Not a chance. Uh, Kirk himself is coming here to talk to you, as well as the Lone Ranger. Why is Kirk coming to see us? Well, of course, when that cable broke, a man was killed. If it was intentional on your part, Steve, it was murder. It wasn't. If Kirk paid you, of course, he's as much to blame as you are. Now, he, he wouldn't care to hang for murder. You'll try to make sure you don't squeal when the Lone Ranger questions you. And why are you... While you're here in jail, Kirk can't get at you to see that you don't squeal. Why are you so interested in me and Skinny? <laughs> because I don't like Rance Kirk. I don't want to see him get away with murder. With murder? What do you mean? Your murder, Steve. What? Yes, yours and Skinny's. A bullet would be the cheapest and surest way to keep you from telling the Lone Ranger all you know. The Lone Ranger had given Steve and Skinny food for thought. In the meantime, Rance Kirk had reached the town. He soon learned of the arrest of Steve and Skinny, then went to the hotel where Hale stayed under an assumed name. He told about the Lone Ranger. Then, it was half an hour later when the sheriff entered his office and turned up an oil lamp which had been burning low. He took a key from his pocket and approached the door with the iron bars. I'm letting you out. You're free to go. How's that? Your friend fixed things with a judge. Are the three of us to be released? Yep. The judge said I might as well let you go, too. Save the cost of feeding you. I'm indebted to someone. Who is it? You can thank Rance Kirk for being free. Rance Kirk, huh? Well, go on into my office. Where is Kirk? I don't know. Your guns and other properties there on my desk. He wouldn't be hiding between the buildings across the road, would he? How would I know? Now get out of here so I can close my office. Go ahead, Skinny. You first. I, uh, I, you go first. Oh, no, thanks. In the darkness, we uh, look something alike. Uh, Steve, you go first. What in tarnation ails you critters? You afraid to walk through that front door? Go on, Skinny. You heard him, Skinny. Go ahead. It's dark outside. You'll be all right if uh, if you get through the door. I, I think someone's between those buildings. What are you scared of? He's not used to having people pay fines for him. Get going. Hurry up, Skinny. Hey! Who fired? He's there. He's waiting to kill us. Who is? Don't open the door, Sheriff. Don't do it. Kirk's waiting to kill us. That's why he paid our fine. What's that? I won't let Kirk shoot me. I'll see him hang for trying to kill me. It's him and Steve that caused Tim's death. You fool, shut up. I won't shut up. You snapped that cable. I just left loose play. Now shut you up. Steve was wild with rage when he grabbed his gun from the table and swung it towards Skinny. Put down that gun. The Lone Ranger leaped forward and shot out of fist. Good work. You got him just in time. He'll be unconscious for a few minutes. He was going to shoot me. They all want to kill me. Sheriff, listen to me. I admit leaving those plans. What are you talking about? I, I didn't have a hand in Tim's death. That was Steve and Kirk paid him. Uh, Kirk's waiting to kill me so I can't tell about him and how he paid I'll him. slow down and talk, uh, Listen, Sam. Sheriff. Uh, listen carefully, Sheriff. 
When he's through talking, I'll call in a friend who can tell you where to find the men you want. The Lone Ranger left the office while Skinny talked at length. A few minutes later, Tonto entered. What do you want, Injun? Talk fast now. I've got lots to do. Me bring message. Kirk in hotel. What? Room 25. Him there with feller named Hale. Oh, go on. How do you know I wanted that information? Feller who send message, tell me wait outside till Skinny finish. I'll get deputies and take care of things as soon as I put these two back behind the bars. It was the following morning when the sheriff called on Connors and told of the arrests he had made. On the strength of what Skinny said in his signed statement, we've got enough to hang Stephen Kirk. And maybe Hale as well. Good work, Sheriff. Good work. With Hale out of the way, I'll not have to worry too much about finishing the bridge on time. You know, Connors, the curious thing is this. Uh, Kirk didn't fire the shot that made Skinny talk. He didn't have any intention of killing Steve and Skinny. No? No. He was waiting in the hotel. He was going to give those critters cash to leave town. Who did fire the shot from across the street? The Indian. He was working with the mask man who started the cafe brawl. It was all a plan to make the truth come out. And who started the cafe brawl? (laughs) He let me know who he is by leaving a silver bullet on my desk. That fellow is the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.